Hi guys, welcome back to August Love Story, the channel. My name is Artika. And I be Tommy. You be Tommy. Today, we are on a roller coaster ride of Married at First Sight. We're reviewing episode, oh, I'm sorry, season 17, episode nine. That episode is titled Wigging Out. I wish I had a wig to put on right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. I think you have more notes than I do. I probably do. Spoiler All right. Well, alert. you. No, I'm following. Can I give lead. you the couple ahead, and then ahead. you just tell me what you got? Yeah. All right. So let's start at the, um, the top. Actually, let's start at the bottom because we don't really got to talk about them too much. Lauren and Orion. Why were they on this episode? Exactly. <laughs> That's why I want to go ahead and get them out of the way. I'm like, why are y'all here? Like, y'all broke up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Um, <laughs> her friend was mad. Her brother and sister-in-law. It, yeah. Who I think her name is Lauren as well. I have no clue. I believe so. She was like, "I hope you don't have to see that MF for no more." It's like, ah, right, dog, all right. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. Um, you know, I felt like. Lauren was a very willing participant. And for some reason, we always have very willing participants get stuck with somebody who's very, very rigid. Mm-hmm. And I hate that for her this season. Um, You never know if it could have been a happily ever after with someone else. But you could at least see that she was willing to try. Yeah. And he was just like, nah, dog. Nah. But it's it's crazy to think about, like, the reasoning that they broke up was because of the idea that he couldn't get past, for lack of a better word, racial tensions that he made up. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it makes you question from the beginning, dating outside your race is that a thing you truly wants to do want to do because there has to be some type of grace given when you're dealing with an interracial couple especially if you both understand that this may this the first time that you guys have met in turns you can say this is the first interracial uh relationship you've been in mm-hmm. because you've never been in a relationship with this person disclaimer I have not watched After Party, but I have watched people's reviews of things that include After Party. And um, I saw something where Lauren said that he reached out to her afterwards and was like, you know, this is a regret for him. And it's like. I hope you put that in your back pocket for the rest of your life, that you have to stop making such rash decisions about things and I know people will go and be like have you ever been called this or has this ever been said about you and the answer is no yeah however the thing that he was upset the most about wasn't even what it actually was right (laughs) so (laughs) for that I feel like you need to take a chill pill and Figure out some things because if that's a trigger for you, mm-hmm. maybe you need to date inside of your race, right? And and, and where you don't worry about that, whatever mm-hmm. that that trigger is. And the crazy part is, it's now you're regretting because I think that's what he said to his friend when he was talking to him was, "I wish things could have been different, and they could have been. You just have to get past some things." Mm-hmm. It's certain things that like if your hard knows are things of that that could be that a person can be ignorant of. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's hard to say a person don't understand the negativity of the N word. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's such a cultural and American thing. Mm-hmm. Right. It's so much debate about it. But the. uh like just just uh indigenous people versus saying indian like like we don't talk about that enough right mm-hmm. and it means more to other 
you know, from other view uh, viewpoints. Mm-hmm. Like it, it for me, it means be respectful of everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And the easiest way for the, that's the that's the I don't know a lot about it. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking up information about it. So you have to be more of a teacher. Mm-hmm. You when have it to comes be willing to, to educate me. I remember when um, it was a mom group that I was in, and someone used the word colored. And all the black girls was like, excuse me. Right. Because in 2023, no matter where you live in America, because yes, sir. most of us in the mom group, the black women mm-hmm. are in the South. Yeah. There's yeah. two, maybe three that are not Southerners. So it's like, all right. We're from the South, so you can't say that it's something that you picked up in the South because you live more North than all of us. Right. You tried it, and nobody was rude, but it was like, let me stop you there. Right. Let's <laughs> let's not use, let's not start this off like Let's this. reel it back in. Right. Let me explain to you where you were wrong, and if you do it again, I'm going to show you where you got me effed up. Yeah. That's simple. Like a statement. <laughs> like, like I, I feel like that's truly simple because it's like having the conversation. You have to have it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then for a person not to know a lot about it, but they're trying not to step on your toes. And mm-hmm. then here it is. I step on your toe. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Because where I'm from, we don't talk about this. Exactly. It's not a thing that we discuss as a group. However, it's like it's very it's it's a way to diffuse any situation, show you where you were wrong. And then we can move fast. We can move past it. Now, if there was a blatant disrespect, like it keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. Like if she would have laughed at Redskin as a comment, which <laughs> in the live that we did with Lisa and Jack and Glenn, our comment section agreed. The only time we ever used that term is to talk about the football the team. The football team, man. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Nobody ever even thought about it. I've never thought about that at all. Um, but because we now know that it's uh, it's uh it's a term a, a derogative term, uh-huh. we're cautious to use it. And they even changed the name of the football team, <laughs> right? <laughs> to Washington football. I like Which, Washington football team better than what it is now. Well, I don't really like. I think it's the Generals or something like I don't that. Really Which like Washington sense. football team that just like pick a mascot. <laughs> That's too funny. Man. Um. <laughs> I don't, I forgot where I was going with this. Yeah, oh, that. but like it would be different if she had said that and yeah. then went back and he said apple was the derogatory term, right? It would have been yeah, because he said he was called an apple in school by somebody and it was derogatory. Like he felt like it was the equivalent of being called Oreo as a black person. Why was somebody called the Oreo? You know, black on the white on the outside, white on the inside. Like you. Oh, you, nobody has ever called me Oreo. But you've heard that. First time. Okay, whatever. Maybe, maybe. It's not the first time it here. I know it, it's not. It didn't stand out to me. <laughs> but like, it's the equivalent of that. They were saying that he was red on the outside, white on the inside. Yeah. Um, At least that's how I got from his explanation. Yeah. Now, he, he talk in circles a lot too. Yeah, he It does. would be different if she had said the red skin joke and then came back with, I'm going to call you an apple. And then came back with something else. And she like, dude, chill out. You need to get over it. But that's not what happened. Yeah. She was immediately uh, regretful for what she said and immediately apologized for. It. So it's like you have to figure out how to get over. It. You have have to have tougher skin than than what you what you have. So mm-hmm. especially when you lead with your culture, uh, right? Um, moving right along. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I really truly don't understand why they was on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that was the only conversations they were having, right? So. Let me let me tell you that I'm I got a divorce, which nobody even went into it. Like, oh my god, I gotta break this news. It the, started out with so how you feel? Like it, <laughs> the fact that she was sad, hurt, and you know she all said these that initially she was angry, and she was like, anger is a surface level emotion. So I had to sit with it, and I realized that it was pain and resentment. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because she only knew this dude for a week. Yeah, I always like the people that get divorced very early on the shows. And they're like, 
I just need to take some time. I'm not going to date. I'm like, you ain't got no attachment to this person. Right. You just, <laughs> I'm not saying you need to just go back out there and date, but don't act like you in the dumps and this was a 30 year relationship. Right. <laughs> like, I just met this person and this person has no effect on my life whatsoever. She called a person that she had sex with two months ago. And, and have see what sex they again. Do. I ain't saying I have sex with them, but see what they do. <laughs> <laughs> they can go out on a dinner date or something. Right. Anyway, who next? You tell me. Nah, you got it. All right. So who did you write the most about or the least about with Becca and Austin, Claire and Cameron? Becca and Austin. All right. Becca's birthday. Um, They met up with some of her friends. Her friends asked them a lot of questions about communication and sex. And they talked about their religious differences. Um. Religion is the overarching issue, and I feel like Becca is the one that keeps bringing it up because she can't understand why Austin is not a Bible thumper. What is she's Jewish? I think so. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's it's his passiveness about it. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, it's the we'll talk about it later. We're talking, and which I think he's taking the right approach, and I'm I'm with you on it. She does bring it up a lot more in the conversations we see than than he does, because mm-hmm. he's more so like I don't want to talk about it right now. Which, well, she she also said that when he says he doesn't want to talk about things, he comes back to yeah, him. yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, is it's I ain't gonna say it's unnecessary to talk about, but you still have to focus on if. I like this person with their values, mm-hmm. right? Their core values of being human. Mm-hmm. Like is is it something that I'm compatible with? In which that's the approach that I'm looking at it through uh, Austin's eyes. He he's he didn't say that that's what he was doing or whatnot, but that's how I'm looking at it. Like, okay, cool. I I get looking at the person and not the religion because <laughs> that's something we can talk about. Later, I have to know if I really want to be with you or not. Mm-hmm. Um, we did find out she wants to give him the booty, mm-hmm. and he said he's taking it slow. <laughs> 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 he said the equivalent of "I'm a lady," <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> um, no, going back to the religion thing, um, his best friend is an atheist. I feel like how far away from the spectrum can you get of, you know, I could be cool with anybody. Mm -hmm. And and that was one of the things that led me to believe that his approach to it is, do I like you as a person? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, is that um, you're going to have to have conversations of, am I unwilling to go to religious ceremonies? Mm-hmm. Um, if he decides that he wants to go to church, because I don't know if he's a person who attends church on a regular basis, because for lack of better words, there's levels to Christianity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if he's going to go to church, is he going to take the kids? If you're going, are you going to take the kids? Like, what does that look like? like I, I, are there going to be kids? Right. I always feel like in this section, you have to say, I think the conversation about kids have to be, do you want kids? Are you open to having kids? Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's one of those things that you have to, like, see through in a conversation. Because um, even for us, the way that I was living my life prior to you, our kids will be going to a 75 minute church, like start to finish. Oh yeah. Everything is 75 minutes with you. The church that you wanted to go to had a longer service, right? Mm-hmm. So but the music was better. I'll take 10 minutes of music. That I don't necessarily care about to get out of church in an hour. <laughs> Than to have music I really like, but I got to be there for three. But um, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm looking at it differently. Yeah. So when you look at it from that standpoint, there's always things to talk about. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I just don't feel like the kids should be. 
I don't feel like that's a, it's an important conversation. I don't want to minimize the kids conversation, but we're not about to have kids right now. I think when me and you got together, do you want kids? I really want, you know, kids. And I had a child at the time. And you know what? There's something that I wish was also discussed more. This has absolutely nothing to do with marriage at first sight. But men's desire to have kids. Because I, you always wanted kids more than I did. Yeah. And people always, even when they see us, it's always assumed that it was me. Yeah. No, it was me. I think I think that has to do, and of course, this is a different conversation. Mm-hmm. But I think that most for me, it was more so of I have all this information that I need to pass down, and and a legacy thing, and the the idea that my relationship, my work with my wife. We've developed a, a family unit between me and her, but then let's go a step further and develop children to um, carry on and be um, participating adults in society mm-hmm. because we have the tools to make them great adults mm-hmm. to better society or whatnot. But it's it's more so of a legacy thing for me mm-hmm. than anything else. I love the idea that I have people to actually mold into bigger people mm-hmm. <laughs> and the, and it's crazy the love that I get from them you know mm-hmm. not saying that your love is not enough but I've always just wanted kids mm-hmm. I don't want nobody else's kids but you know <laughs> <laughs> want some of my own anyway but I don't think I don't think with Becca and Austin that's uh, an approach that they need to get hung up on or stuck on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the religion thing is more so, um, like we said, it's Becca's thing, mm-hmm. but she has to find a thing to get hung up on mm-hmm. um, because of how things are going. They're truly in a honeymoon stage and their approach to the things are working for them because of who they are. Yeah. You have anything else for them as a couple? Um, let me check real quick. Do, 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 do. Check my palm pilot. Let me check my palm pilot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Austin said a perfect question um, when he was talking to her friends was um, he was talking about her exes and then he was like, what do I need to do to avoid to not become an ex-boyfriend? I remember that question. I was, I was like, like, that, that was is a good question. There. Like what was wrong? What was wrong with their relationship yeah. that I need to be aware of? Yeah. Um, they outside of that, man, they had a good time and everybody likes each other. Like she really she was saying at the end that she like her exes, she hated, basically hated going out and spending time with them. But she was like. Um, she likes his friend that came by and, and they can she don't feel like it'll be a task to go hang out with them mm-hmm. like you her know? friends and his friends meshed well but she also felt like she was okay with her friends without the buffer yeah like she was okay with his friends without the buffer of her friends yeah. and vice versa yeah yeah and so that, that those are the things that you can appreciate because we all know that they're gonna hit a wall mm-hmm and when they hit that wall, is what they're doing right now enough to get them over it? Mm-hmm. It's funny that I think about that with us. Um, our closest friends, with the exception of one of yours and my cousin, all are friends. Yeah. So there's no awkwardness mm-hmm. with getting people together for anything yeah. because it's just like, oh, these people have known each other longer than we've known any of them. Like even for example, uh, Lance and Lanisha walking down the aisle together, mm-hmm. they knew each other right. a decade before either one of us met either one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like, oh, okay. It's just nice big right. friendship circle, right, little right. family here. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it was all good. I actually need to reach out to him. 
Um, both of these were little volcanoes ready to erupt. Who you want to go with? Let's go with Emily and Brittany because I want to end with Claire and Cameron. All right. So Pastor Cal convinced them to move in with each other. Um, they probably started talking about the money that they wasn't going to get for things. Yeah. And was like, all right, we ain't finna send no camera crew to your house, your mm-hmm. house, and then everything else. So we got a crew in this building. Um, She went and sat down and talked to one of her friends and said that everything started off good and now Brandon has issues with communication when they're on camera. And I'm like, that's interesting that he's having communication issues on camera so are you finding out the answers to your questions specifically? Do you off find camera. me attractive? Yeah. Off camera. And does he feel like he's being put on the but spot? That's, that's the thing, though. It's like, can you trust what he's saying is true? I don't know. You know, because I, I would imagine that if I say one thing on camera, or do one thing on camera and then off camera, I, I tell you. Well, like. How do I trust you? How do I trust that what your answer is is the truth? Because anybody can say anything. You do you find me attractive? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you love me? Of course I do. Kiki, do you love me? <laughs> you know, like all these things. And you can you can say it, but your actions are different when you um when you're off camera or on camera and and hence there's confusion. Mm-hmm. And nothing works with confusion. And my problem, someone in our comments perfectly described it as like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde yeah. type situation. It's like, I'm cool with you saying you need like space, but you've never had someone around you for a sec, like a consecutive number of days and being able to like, be okay. Like I, I'm, I don't understand the space thing because it's, it's like in a marriage, you guys live together. If you, if you can't live together, you're gonna like it's a constant communication thing, right? Mm-hmm. You saying you need space means that you're trying to break up because <laughs> what you need space for. I wouldn't take it that far because, like, as an example that I'll use. When our apartment caught on fire and we had to stay in a hotel for what was it like two weeks, a week or two, um, I needed space. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> and like, I don't mean like I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. It's just difficult being in the confines, right, 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 of one space. But that's a, that's the a thing I'm talking about. It's like okay, like even you know, go do your own thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not saying twenty four seven we like back to back, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand mm-hmm. to each other, always constantly talking to each other. But when we lay our heads down, let's go to sleep together. Let's let's have dinner together, and that's every day. Right. And the thing for me that is confusing about that is. I can understand you were in a hotel room together for seven days. You have the intensity of so much of Mm -hmm. what you're doing being filmed, right? I can get you feeling like you need to like, for lack of better words, wash the day off of you. Like get all of this stuff away from you. Because she was saying that he takes really long showers because that's where he, what was the word that they use? He basically, I don't know what the word was used, (laughs) but he's processing. <clears throat> um, but he finds everything about her to be overwhelming because she came in with her things and she was like, oh yeah, that's the stuff for the kitchen. And I was talking to you about it, I believe that was right before you left out. Um that I couldn't even imagine maintaining where I live, but trying to navigate a new space. And you do feel like you just need to take a whole bunch of stuff. Because, like, even something as simple as seasonings, right? Mm -hmm. There are seasonings that you have in your cabinet that you don't necessarily want to buy another one of. But you do go to reach for it every so often. So I get, yeah, let me take some some extra things so I can figure this out. Because if I'm living here for eight weeks, this needs to feel like home. Right, right. And I'm not just going to salt and pepper it up. When I use complete seasoning every day. <laughs> well, that was that was the thing that, that kind of stuck out with me when they were 
at the party, uh, the party shop. We gonna call it the party shop mm-hmm. when they were planning to get the wigs for the theme party and stuff like that. All of that seemed forced mm-hmm. on his on his side, mm-hmm. and it's like they talked about how she felt in the beginning of you know him wanting to stay at, her, at his place and her want her staying at her place because he if he ain't gonna move in, what I'm moving in for, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Cause I can be at home with I my can be at home. with my stuff in my kitchen cabinet. That I right, know where right. it is. Um, and she was like, she was okay with that at first, but then I was like, how? You weren't okay with it, and the reason we know you weren't okay with it is the confessionals and the faces that you made when it was initially said to you. Yeah, was but, it last episode or the episode before that? I think it was last. <laughs> But the meat and potatoes of that whole conversation was her friends grilling him. Mm-hmm. I think they had, I think their questioning could have been better mm-hmm. and their attitudes and tones could have been better. Mm-hmm. Like, or they would have been better received if they would have checked that. Like the example of her saying, she got all this stuff out of the oven. He was like, no, I got it out of the oven. She was like, well, you didn't help her put it on the platters. That was the agreement. It that may was, or may not have been the agreement. Yeah. But if that's what happened. It was I don't a, like a lot of people in my kitchen with me. Right. Yeah. So if something is as simple and I don't know what they had, but let's just like call it pigs in a blanket. Right. Yeah. yeah. Say she had pigs in the blanket and she was taking them off the pan. It don't take two of us to do that. No. I don't need your really, help with this. Right. It, it really don't take me pulling it out. But if you pulled <laughs> it out and you sat it on the stove because you heard the timer go off and you're right there, yeah. you pull it out, sit it on the stove. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't necessarily need your help moving them to a platter. But the, and, that, and that's the thing that I was like, the attitude and the tone should have been checked before they started talking to him because she had already had the conversation with them. He didn't want to move in. Mm-hmm. He didn't answer the question of me being attractive. He didn't help me bring my stuff in the house. Right. He. These are all the things that he didn't do. And these are the f- people that she's talking to. Because one, we have to remember, I've only known him for a week. Mm-hmm. So I, I like I'm supposed to like him. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to like him. But look what this mother... <laughs> effort didn't do you know or got me feeling so she's already went back and told them I feel this way mm-hmm. so now they have their protective cap on and I gotta <laughs> get him straight because he ain't finna just mess with my friend it's like Jay don't break my friend on right right <laughs> exactly and so um, they have all this fuel to the fire already mm-hmm. anything can pop them off and so like that's why I'm like their line of questioning didn't work well mm-hmm. just because of the predetermined attitude coming into it mm-hmm. or the negative uh, view I have of you coming into it. And then, oh, you didn't help her plate the stuff and it's looking like everything is on her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he has every right to defend himself the way that he did. Mm-hmm. Like, they they gonna be snappy with him. It's okay for you to be snappy with you with them. Mm-hmm. It's it's not smart to do a tit for tat thing. It's not because we don't get anywhere. We don't learn anything. But if that's the approach you take, that's the approach you take. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's like for me looking at Brendan. It's like man, you're just trying to make it to decision day, which surprisingly ain't nobody has brought that up yet. Um, Because they've already made their decisions. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, Just the idea that he was attacked or felt attacked. It's like, (laughs) dang, that gives more fuel to to, for her friend, for this experience to be a bad one for their friend. Mm -hmm. That that gives more um fuel to the idea of him not being attracted to her because as they said in the end the people you hang around are that or similar like you're hanging around people that think similar to you mm-hmm. or or act similar to you not the same but you have some similar Sim- you cross you crossovers yeah and so if he don't like her friends it's some piece of her he don't like you know mm-hmm. 
Um, and she apologized to him for how her friends acted and were towards him. And I was like, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I don't really. Oh, last thing. The only thing I'm going to say the only thing, one of the bigger things that bothered her friends and it bothered me too. He was like, if this were real life. Oh, yeah. I was like, bro, what, like, what do you mean? It is real life. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about, man? It's real life. If he had said it, like. He think he playing GTA, don't he? <laughs> if he had said beyond this experience. Yeah. Um, If we were not doing this TV show, because one of the things I appreciate about Married at First Sight is that they don't act like it's not a TV show. Mm-hmm. Like, we break the fourth wall regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that just thought that happened of recent. Like, yeah. But I'm saying like, it's very regularly that the fourth wall gets broken. Um, Cause producers will just be like, Hey, <laughs> we're not doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but. That would have pissed me off as a friend as well. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? If yeah. this was real Especially, life. like, it, it, I would ask, like, you got to explain real life a little bit more. Like, if they, if I'm sitting there and, you know, they, <laughs> they're talking or something like that and, that, and that comes up, and I'm like, you have to explain that real life because we are in real life. In our pretend world, you don't help women with their stuff either. And I'm going back to the, she's trying to move all her stuff in. Yeah. And he just standing there looking at her yeah. like, like my thing is, is if maybe you don't want to help move this stuff, but I'm trying to get on to the next task. And if giving a hand will get us on to the can, next task, if you can get me all the stuff in too. the house, <laughs> I can put it up. That's yeah. the next task yeah. because the amount of things is overwhelming. But when you look, like, he was like, "Why does she have all these clothes? Because she got to wear them." And I'm not a person who has an excessive amount of clothes as far as things like if I was moving into somewhere for a few weeks, the weather's not going to change. I got a limited rotation of things, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, you're getting overwhelmed with things. And instead of taking a step back to ask questions or say, like even on the the kitchen stuff, like do you think we need all this kitchen stuff? Let's see what we have, and then we can see what we can send back to your house. Or if you know that you're so easily overwhelmed with things, come up with things to help you defeat this overwhelming feeling. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm overwhelmed with with stuff, and I just maybe like three or four months ago figured this out. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, I looked, I was going to work and then the elevator, they had little random things. Mm -hmm. And I kept seeing this message of just breathe when you feel stressed and stuff like that. So what I do is I pause, I stop what I'm doing, I breathe and then think about what am I trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Because the the overwhelming feeling comes from it's so much stuff going on and my mind goes. Like I think about you a make lot up of scenarios. Yeah, I think about a lot of stuff at one time, mm-hmm. and it gets overwhelming. And I and I have to stop, breathe, figure out what am I trying to accomplish? How do I get there the fastest? Mm-hmm. You know, and that helps. It mm-hmm. mm-hmm. relaxes me. That that helps me calm down and can can go attack what I need to attack. Yeah, I don't know where his overwhelm is necessarily coming from. Um, Like, does she remind him of someone and he can't take it? Man, that's just a good adverb that he thought of. I mean, but I'm saying there's something that you need to, like, work through, right? Yeah. Because, like, one of the things that you, a tool that you gave me is I would, like, think through all the stuff that I need to get done. And it's not like it's so much stuff that I can't get it done. It's just, oh, I need to do this. 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 And for a while, I wouldn't write the stuff down. 
it would just be in my head and I'd be in the middle of doing something and be like, ah, oh, I forgot to do this. And I got to jump to something else. But like being able to write stuff down, even if you don't necessarily prioritize the things. Mm-hmm. And even if they're not like huge tasks, I remember at one point in time in life, I used to write out my to-do list and I would even write like take a shower on the list. Yeah. And it's like, that's something that I've already done. Like brush your teeth. I've already done that for the day. But let me check this off my right, list. Right, Because it makes you feel better to get things done, but it also makes it so that the list of things that you need to do to get out the door is less overwhelmed. That's, that was the, the off task. And once I say this, we, we can already move, always we can move on okay? to the next person. But when I was training, uh, my last trainee, mm-hmm. I said, find the things that get layups, right? Mm-hmm. What's your layup for the day? And I, I stress that. <laughs> and probably like a few months ago, like at this point, she's on her own and stuff like that. She was like, yeah, I'm just trying to find the easy thing to get me rolling. Mm-hmm. It's like, I find that thing, man. You listen, but it makes sense though. Yeah, it's just one of those things because if you have a list of 12 things and two of them is something that you was going to do anyway, yeah. you like, look, I've already started my day. Yeah. Like, even if you take that as like cooking, for example, you know, you putting onions in something, go on, chop them things up. Yeah, yeah. Because now when you get to that step, you're not burning something. Trying to do trying this to chop one the thing. onions because yeah. you knew they had to be chopped anyway. Like it's like building in those good, good things. Those your those, wins. Building in your wins to get things rolling mm-hmm. because it's easier to continue mm-hmm. than it is to start. Mm-hmm. And once you see you're closer to the end. You're going to work harder. Mm-hmm. So I knock this stuff out. It's like, <laughs> let me get this done. It's like if I had a list of eight things and I stretched it to 12, like if I hit my stride, I can do it. Yeah. If I hit all eight and I'm on number nine, I'm going to push through the 12. Right, right, right. Let me go on and get to 10. Right. 10 and, is like all things are possible. Yeah, right, right. You get to 10 and you're going to look at the time and like, oh, shoot, let's go. You know, but anyway. But yeah, he got to figure out this overwhelm and he also needs to figure out what he meant by in real life. Now, I honestly think he's just going through the flow until he can say no. He is. Like, the only couple that I really, well, I ain't going to say the only couple, but um, they're definitely a going through the motions couple. Yeah. Well, I don't think she's going through the motions. I think she's motions. really trying to figure out how do I figure <laughs> out if this is what I want to do. How do I get to a point to where I can say yeah or nay? Mm-hmm. And he's not making it easy for her. No, not at all. Anywho, last couple, the tall and the short. Mm-hmm. Claire and Cameron. Um, started off very nicely in this episode. Claire brought him lunch to the bike shop. She ate half a sandwich. She did. Then um, I felt like she was judging his career choice again. Because she asked him, does he ever get bored? Um, And it was something else she asked him along that same line. Is this what you want to do or was it like, are you passionate about it? Yes, that's what it was. And he was telling her that he's one of the five carbon fiber experts. He's, um, you know, he doesn't get bored. He likes what he does. Um. I didn't expect his bike shop. I didn't see like how many bikes were in there, but it was more than five. And I didn't expect his bike shop to have more than five bikes to be worked on because I was confused by him making a living having a bike shop in Denver. But it's a job. Hey, anything can (laughs) pay the bills, man. If you do it enough. And like sidebar for that, there's a channel that I watch on YouTube. I was watching it before you came downstairs. Um, with this lady whose family owns a garden center and he was talking about how it grew from being a seed company to being a full fledged like nursery and everything. And it's like we would never think a seed company could be that viable, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you start going into, oh, the nursery part of it and all that stuff, and he was talking about um, business ebbs and flows and like recessions, he was like, recessions don't hit the garden business like that. Yeah. And when you think about it, like they really don't. When we all got forced to stay at home because of COVID, 
Home Depot and local yeah. nurseries yeah. thrive because what were we doing? Mm-hmm. Putting money back into where we live yeah. and the things that we like to do. So um, maybe I don't know how much these bikes are that he works on and how much he gets paid to work on these bikes, which your boy had a joke about that. Ali Sadiq. What do you say? About biking. Like he went uh, to a bike shop and he was like, he looked at one bike and he was oh like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, what's the price on this? And they was like, all oh, the prices on the thing. He was like, nah, this is a skew number. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he didn't even get an expensive bike and he spent like $1,800. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, people that do this passionately mm-hmm. invest money into yeah. it. I think that he's just found that niche of people yeah. and that's whose bikes he work on. For me, as Ali Sadiq said, Bikes cost seventy nine dollars. Right, right, right. <laughs> if I'm getting fancy, I might get the one that's two twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no bikes ain't yeah. But that's for how often I would ride a bike. My bike is collecting dust currently. It definitely is. But you know, I it is what it is. There. Um, they had a no cut <laughs> everything but a cup party, mm-hmm. which is different. <laughs> what Cameron started to piss me off in this episode, though, um, only because when she was preparing for it, he was supposed to bring the food. And I'm assuming that's a conversation that they had. Mm-hmm. He knew he was supposed to bring the food. My thing is, he get it, <laughs> and I feel like he made this up, mm-hmm. right? But the food's going to be, I don't know why he didn't <laughs> go get the food in the beginning. Like, y- y'all f- talked about what, I'm pretty sure y'all talked about what you wanted. Mm-hmm. And what you was gonna get? Why not order it? Like I don't know if you ask me to do one thing mm-hmm. for something for a party that we're throwing that we know that we're throwing. Mm-hmm. I can do that one thing if I don't have to do anything else. Mm-hmm. But that's my one job. I'm gonna make sure I do it, and I'm gonna make sure I do it well. <laughs> and so it's like it's no excuse. And then when <laughs> she says something about it, and she looks. Uh, frustrated he says oh she's just overreacting about this and you know like bro she asked you to do this my my question is what was the food that he was supposed to go get I think they had nachos that was the consolation, consolation. because oh. remember he was like there's a place that sells empanadas we'll just go there and get something yeah yeah Um. so I that's what makes me wonder because like he and then the time frames kept changing because he was like, we don't need this food for another two hours. But then before they fr- hit her friends, because his friends didn't come, yeah. she was like, this stuff has been sitting out for five hours. They was talking about it was already made at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And then when they came and got it, that's when they had it. So, And, and my question is, what app did you use to order the food? Because Uber Eats. When they didn't use Uber Eats, he went and got the food. No, he ordered it though. Oh. Because you can do order for pickup on Uber Eats. Oh. You can still tell them what time what, you want to eat. Whatever, whatever it was, it was a thing <laughs> of why didn't you do this in a manner that made sense? And that's the that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Because if I'm going to order, if I'm going to place an order for food from a place to keep it from sitting out for a long time, if it's just down the street, my thought process in the conversation would be, hey, I'm going to call them and say, hey, I'm having a party, want to pick up some stuff. Can I have an order be ready at this time? I wouldn't Mm -hmm. have ordered it in an app on my phone. Yeah. That would have been a call and have a conversation. And if I had the conversation with them and they say, oh, it'll be ready within 15 minutes of you ordering it. I, and we don't take phone orders or whatever it may be. OK, I'll just wait. Order it. They come in at seven. I'll place the order at six fifteen, six thirty. run down there and I'll be back right as they're coming in. We got hot food. Yeah, but I don't think the... For me, right? He he kept talking about the food being old, the food being old. I'm like, yeah, if you go get it five hours before and, you know, whatever food, that like, you got an oven, just warm it up. Mm-hmm. It's my, my And thought. that was her question, like, is the oven warm? And he was like, yeah. She was like, no, it's not. I don't know what happened there. Like, 
I was like, bro, like, and that's the thing that's frustrating about him is like, you're looking at all these scenarios and you're saying she's overreacting, but I mean, you're like, overreacting. It, right. It's, it's like you have food. The big complaint was the food was going to be old. Never said it was going to be cold, but just old. I'm like, bro, just warm it up. You still going to eat it. Mm-hmm. Cause that's what he said about the nachos. He was like, yeah. She was like, aren't you still going to eat it? He's like, right. yeah. So, so what are we doing here? Right. <laughs> so it's like, man, just just do what you just like. Me, me personally, when it comes to food, yeah, I like hot food. I like good food, you know. So <laughs> will I eat warmed up food? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's like if and if, if the food is cold, I'm just going to go warm it up. Mm-hmm. Like even if you didn't have a microwave and I knew the food was cold and I'm a guest, man, where your oven mints at? Let's put this in the oven real quick. It's it's still cool. But that's and, how and I that's, am. that's with friends because like I think about us going to Chris and Kiana's house and Chris and Kiana coming over here. If something was cold sitting on the stove, Kiana would not hesitate to turn on the oven, stick something in there and be like, all right, so I did this. Right, right, right. <laughs> What's next? Right. And, and that's th- literally just, that's how your friends right. operate. And that's the type of people that were coming over. Mm-hmm. That's to, what I'm saying. To meet them. And it's it's like, my thing was, Cameron, I, I think because none of his friends were showing up mm-hmm. or the people that he invited were showing up, he... Would took a very hands off um, approach. These to are it. your friends. This is your housewarming. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, I did not see him right there. So it's it's when even when they at the the thought that he had of all her pr- friends being therapists mm-hmm. and that being intimidating. Mm-hmm. That's a <laughs> that's hilarious. Good morning, son. That's a that's you know it's it's a fair thing mm-hmm. you know for for him to think of and so I was like dog that is tough everything you say here is going to be analyzed in a way that you wasn't prepared for it to be analyzed yeah because they literally was like and so how's your relationship with your dad and they were saying it as a joke and it wasn't a joke right like does your dad know that you're married and he like nah. <laughs> my dad's on my death on his deathbed. How do you tell somebody that? And it's like, bro, you that ain't a conversation you had with your wife, right? I don't understand why she didn't know that because, again, the flashback that he presented to her was, "We'll go back home and have a wedding for my family there." And it's like, okay, cool. This just feels like something to do at this point. Right. Because if your dad doesn't know, you've never shared with me that your dad is sick. Like, what if your dad died tomorrow? And then you looking at me, I'm like, you tell me and I'm like shocked. Yeah. Because you never mentioned he was sick. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. No. Um. So. He talked to the friends. Claire got pissed off about the fact that that was the first time that she had heard about his dad being sick and all that. Um, They talked about their religious um, disconnect. He doesn't want to raise their children as religious. He thinks he's going to brainwash them. Um, It's just, it's a lot. And... I thought in the beginning that Claire was going to be the very like rigid, um, non-trying person in their relationship, Mm -hmm. but she got a tough hand dealt to her with him. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a lot of, uh, standoffish, not understanding. Like it's, it's almost if, if, as if society is different from his point of view. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, he don't understand societal norms and stuff like that, which it may be that way because of how he was brought up, Mm -hmm. you know, because common sense, general knowledge, uh, general things is not is not always the same for everybody. But 
if you understand or you pay attention to that stuff, they asked him why he wanted to get married. He was like, it's ultimately he was like, it's because it's time. All these things are are right for me, and this is what I'm missing. So I wanted to like do this. This is why, you know, type of deal. And I was like, oh. I get that, but mm-hmm. you know, you you have to look at the situation. You got to do a self evaluation, and then you got to do understand who it is that you're here with and what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he does have some type of understanding of Claire. Because he was saying to her friends, um, like certain she's more of a person that's gonna I'm gonna do it myself, mm-hmm. you know. And so he he allows her because he doesn't want to cause an argument. Right. And they were like, "Yeah, Claire has to be right all the time," mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. And that's that shows that he's paying attention. But it's like, man, you have to express certain things, certain feelings. Even for a person that has to be right all the time, there are times when they're right. <laughs> right. But no, like she asked him, is there anything you need? And he didn't say, he said, no, I'm fine. Like, bro, you just expressed to her friends that you needed to to have the feeling of there's some type of, there's something there. Because mm-hmm. he was telling him, her friends, that he doesn't feel like she likes him. Mm-hmm. There's no chance of intimacy, even though he likes her and and wants that. Mm -hmm. Like, tell her that because that's what she's asking you. Hey, I need you to be more friendly to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happens. or I don't know how it looks, but this is how I feel. And and him not understanding that it's okay to say that there's the there lies the issue. Yeah. You know, because she's having the same issues that for lack of better words, she was like, he like don't have common sense (laughs) like his common sense is different from my common sense you know basically yeah and it's one of those things again you know how we say a lot of things would be okay if they were just fully explained Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say she wouldn't have gotten upset about him not having the food but if he had explained his stance on why on why because I would, I wanted to know too. Yeah. But if he would have explained his stance when he came in and said, "I don't have the food," they would have been taken better than just "I don't, I don't have, have the food." food. You're right. Right. Um. Now I don't. You can't explain the way me not knowing your daddy is dying. Yeah. Like that's just a failure of communication. Right. <laughs> like, bro, that's something that you like. My dad's on his deathbed. Have you went to see him? You know, <laughs> have you talked to him? Type of what's wrong with your dad? Yeah. There's a lot of questions here. Yeah, so I don't know. But that's all I got, man. All right. Well, you got a question? What's wrong with Cameron? But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a question. Um, well, again, if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification bell. Quad is signing himself up for swim lessons. I don't know how we got here. No. Um, turn on the notification bell, comment down below, let us know what you thought of this week's episode. Um, join us on Saturday morning, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time or whatever the time zone is right mm-hmm. now with Daylight Savings um, for the Love Brew podcast coffee break. Um, you got anything else? No, that's it. All right. Bye, y'all. Peace.